Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's not an instrument or lab instrument or something like that I usually uh, document in my videos. Well, this is just a um, transistor. <laughs> not any regular transistor, right? This one is a transistor module. Also, um, uh, this is uh, for very, very high voltages and very, very high currents. So it's uh, an IGBT, isolated gate bipolar transistor uh, module. It consists of four half bridges. And these uh, four half bridges, they are connected in parallel. That will be the four individual outputs. And there is a metal bar down here. So they are... They must be connected together because the control drive logic, there is only one high side and only one low side uh, drive signal here in this connector. And here on the top, we have the four positive and four negative inputs to each half bridge. The name and specifications, I will show a little bit closer here. It's called a convert team and it's a skip 2013 GB172. This is all you need to uh, Google this and get all the specifications. Uh, I can say it is uh, 1,700 volts, 2,000 amps. So that is quite a lot of megawatts this thing can turn on and off. I found uh, one used on eBay for 2,000 euros. <laughs> and they don't even say if it's guaranteed to work. I, When I got this one, this seal here, warranty uh, seal. I was the one who broke this. So I know nobody was in here um, before me. This, uh, no, I don't know, it, it, you can't see weight, but it's six and a half kilos. And they are sold and made, including a very, very solid heat sink. Because that is the way it is with IGBTs. Um, they don't go on like a fed to almost zero volts, but they, there is a quite a lot of uh, voltage drop over them, especially at higher, higher currents. And that is why you need a big, hefty heat sink and a lot of air. So I took away the top part here. You see there's also markings. Well, I don't know if we, can, if we can see this minus plus, minus plus all the way, right? And um, this whole unit here is full of a black epoxy. Yeah, it is very, very hard. And that will be all the connections to the individual IDBTs. I believe this one is full of uh, up to um, stuff, switch mode converters and uh, so on. Uh, you need to supply this with a, a 15 volt uh, DC supply. I can put in a little picture of the connector here. The pinout and all that was quite easy to find on their web page. And this way you can also see that you have only one high and low control. You also have a current measurement output, a temperature output, and uh, error. This is probably for overloading or uh, any kind of protection, a voltage or current uh, over voltage, uh, yeah, over protections. It is, of course, also built into the driver unit here. So that is a thin, thin, flimsy parallel. I mean, this is probably only for testing or very very low current i mean this is just super thin i believe these goes down to a mega thick output copper bar here so this is where all the main current flow 
And since this is a rated 2000 amps for all four in parallel, uh, we will have 500 amps going in this one here. Look at how nice that is made of copper and... Yeah, it's not super interesting for me, the driver on the top, because that this one drives all four modules in parallel. What I really want is individual drive to each of the three sections. I don't need the fourth, uh, that is like a spare, but I want three of them for three-phase generation, obviously, right? <laughs> So I want to put in 400 volts of DC here, and then I want to switch these and generate my three-phase output here. That is, uh, that is my intention, and that is, of course, why I take it, take it to parts and see how it works. And I also think it's uh, fun to document how these are built. And I hope I can get, this, um, I can get them off this heatsink somehow. So I'll try and uh, open one of them but before i do any of this i will take my uh, ohm meter in a voltage mode and i will see if i can measure the reverse diodes because in this mode uh, they should all be off and we should uh, be able to uh, measure the reverse uh, the body diodes in the transistors so they actually add these i will um maybe i should put in a little uh, schematic here that shows this uh, module and then you can see the diodes that points from minus to the output and from the output to the positive. So, of course, if I can measure these and they are exactly the same in all four units, then there is a little chance. I mean, it's not super obvious that it's uh, blown up, right? Well, let's try and see that. So if this is the minus input, my output, I only see 0.3 volts, and uh, where is that one? And of course, from the output to the positive, I see also 0.3. And of course, if I go the other way, I should not see anything at all, right? Or anything between these. Here I should of course see the double, because now I'm going through both of them like that. So there's a little chance that they're actually working. I don't know if I'm doing anything stupid right now, but and I think I just had one of these moments where I feel, hmm, I'm probably going to break this in the attempt to look what is inside. So we've got these little metal springy connections here, and they just stick in like this, see? And they are different length, depending on the layer they go down there. Look at that. And I feel they go through some sticky slime down there. This is really, really weird. What is going on here? The top ones right here, you just you can actually just take them and lift them up. They're completely loose. And then there is, of course, another. Mm-hmm, I think we are getting in. And then this whole unit here. Uh, maybe, I don't understand how the heck this is done. Think about it, this thin, thin material here that just wraps around these. Is that really good for 1700 walls? I mean, there's probably plenty of distance, right? You need to go all this way. Hmm. Well, well, I guess they know what they're doing. This is a little bit funny. So this is mechanical de-stressing when you screw in here and they don't want this to move. 
Mm -hmm. I think I was able to carry on a little bit. So I could lift this up. And look at that slimy, sticky, goopy de goop. And it's, of course, protecting everything down there. So it just goes down and touches something. So this is good for 500 amps, really? Oh man, I probably shouldn't have touched this. <laughs> Look at that sticky goopity goop. Oh no, this is just bad. I don't know how to... Why did I do that? I just had the idea I could um, easily take my fingers under here. And while I was pulling this up, I didn't see what the heck I was doing. And now I got... This is the punishment for not... Ay, ay, ay. I think I got a little breakthrough in my little investigation here. So let's start again with the top like that. And uh, you can, of course, again see these pieces of metal. They go down like this. And look at that. There's a little cut here, right? And this means it goes down around here. So this is the output and it just touches real hard of course with all the pressure from all these things screwed down it touches this piece of metal here and here right so this is what i called o for output and i've done the same investigation on the input side where we got these two pieces here and you see the negative is under and it is more to the right and again there is a cut in it and it goes down like that and like that, see? So that means my negative input, that will be, let me see if I can point. This is negative input and here again, and this is the positive input supply. See, I marked this one positive and so forward, right? I also found another little cool detail about this unit. See, the output goes through this piece of plastic but it's not just a piece of plastic I don't know if we can see this I should probably try and take this out but I believe there is a ferrite here with windings and the connections we got here and here they connect to the current sense transformer for the output isn't that a little bit fascinating and of course, everything just clicks in. And this little part here also clicks in. Ugh, I don't know if I can get this out easily, but it looks like it should be clicked in like. There was a reason for why I wanted to take this out. So this is the current sense transformer and look what we have here. We got a big and a small winding and what the heck is going on here? What is the purpose of this? I think this is just the way it's made. It isn't really important. It's just those two halves. They just click in, pressed in like that. And what we see up here, that's of course the access points for the windings. It's uh, actually really, really weird. What is going on here? There's also another thing that is going on. See, we've got some really, really thin wires. And the, the windings out here, they are much thicker. So we probably got a, a two different uh, ranges of current. Some is probably for protection and the other one is for measurement. Yeah, it's getting... More and more interesting the whole way this is designed. See, just here, click, click, click. Everything is designed for manufacturing as fast and as cheap as possible. I'm really sorry about this uh, slime here. It's very, very difficult uh, to remove. But I think we can see the ITPTs and the big hefty diodes. They're using... Um, stitch bonding technique so that means the bond wire comes and it goes to one point and then it continues to another point and this is to connect to the diodes 
in uh, more points and more area to spread out the hot point where you uh, put the wire, uh, the bond wire. So the stitch bonding technique uh, was invented in the 90s and it's a very, very uh, common technique today. And out here you see a little temperature sensor. This is a one kilo ohm at uh, room temperature. So we can see the minus and the gate and the gate output and positive points right there. So what I've done is I've copied all my um, pinouts to my individual systems like this so I can document what is going on and then I can continue building a little plug-in board here that will fit the points here and um, so I can continue my little project. I just really wanted you to see how this is uh, all done and there's of course this is I believe it is damaged because when I try to pull out all the goop goop here I did of course touch the bond wires and there is uh, really no way to avoid that but I only need uh, three good modules so um, this is just what I had to do there's no documentation about the internal connections anyway and uh, this just had to be done one way or the other uh, it's, I'm a little bit sad that it looks like I can't get my modules away from the uh, aluminium plate down here I believe they are glued somehow here right so so there's a very very good thermal connection and uh, yeah what well, I, I don't know exactly I want to say I don't want to say any, anything more about this I just wanted to show you how they build these fantastic high power IGBT modules so I hope you had a little bit of fun so far and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.